All right, so this point in time, we all know that Nintendo's pulling its little dirty tricks, taking all the Wii U games and porting them up to the Switch. But today, I have a list of 10 games that I truly don't think will ever be ported from the Wii U to the Switch. All right, so what's going on, gamers? Today, we're going to look at 10 games for the Wii U that are never going to come to the Switch. We're coming in hot. All right, so number one, we got the wonderful 101. Just with the way that this game plays, I just don't, it could probably be converted over to the Switch. But I mean, realistically, the core of this game just wouldn't make sense, not on the Wii U. So this is a prime example of an exclusive that is worth owning a Wii U for. This was very early on in the lifespan. This game came out maybe six months after the Wii U came out, I believe it was. This and Pikmin 3 were two of the earlier heavy hitters, you could say, that came out for the Wii U. And Wonderful 101 is truly an amazing game. It really is. And definitely worth picking up and playing. All right. Now this one. This was a pack-in with the system, with all of them. Nintendo Land, number two. Such a cool game, so underappreciated. It came with every Wii U, but yet you never hear anybody talking about how badass this game is. It has, is it eight or ten games? It's twelve games. Okay, so out of the ones that it comes with, the ones that I really thoroughly enjoyed, Metroid Blast, Pikmin's Adventure, Zelda, Mario Chase is fun with friends. The first three I mentioned are fun by yourself. Um, the Donkey Kong uh, Crash Course is really fun by yourself as well. The Yoshi game's okay. The Ninja game's okay. Honestly, every one of these games is fun. About half of them are fun by yourself. About half of them are fun with, you know, a group of friends. Um, it's a shame that we'll probably never see this game ever again on any other platform. This is not going to be hard for you to find to add to your collection. This game 100% will never be off of the Wii U. Number three, Game of Wario. Rumor has it already that we're getting another one this year for the Switch. However, it's not going to be this version. Sadly, this version didn't come with a lot of mini games in it. I really wish that it had a little bit bigger of a selection, but the ones that it did have were very fun, very unique. This is kind of getting up there to be a pricier title. This was an early on title. This was like a 2013 title for the Wii U. Um, you're not going to often find this one in stores, though, so I would recommend picking it up soon uh, if you want to add it to your collection. So, Game of Mario. <laughs> this is well known to be kind of rare and a little bit on the pricier side for the Wii U, but with the way this plays, I don't think this could work on any other systems. Uh, being Funky Barn. Really weird, quirky, unique game that is sadly kind of rare and hard to find. Um, most people keep their seal. I opened it and I actually played it and enjoyed it. Um, it's actually definitely worth a pickup if you can find it. It's it's pretty it's pretty fun to play. It really is. Now this was an actual launch day title, which I had debated on picking up at launch. Did not pick up at launch. So this is number five, Tank Tank Tank. Uh, really cool game. I know Alpha Omega Sin always talks about how this is a really cool game. You can play it by yourself, but the main draw of this game is going to be playing it with friends, you know, when you have them over. Um, it's really cool. I mean, basically there's like a, a boss that comes out and then tanks that come out, but then mainly you just sit there in your tank, and then each one of the tanks has a face on it, because you use the gamepad to take a picture of your face, and then like while you're playing you can see your your friends' faces on the game, and it's, it's really cool. And like, again, only... A, I guess, would that be asymmetrical gameplay that you would call that? That could only be brought to you by the Wii U. Um, if you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of the Wii U. I'm, I'm really disappointed that the Wii U died so quickly and nobody supported it because things like this are a prime example. Like, I mean, think about how that would have done if, like, they did Metroid 2, Prime 2, had four player multiplayer on it. Imagine if they had done, like, remade that and then, like, you could scan your face in with the gamepad and then. You pass that around, and everybody is playing with like a pro controller, and then the fifth person's playing, you know, with the Wii U pad, and then like you got like five people playing Metroid Prime together, like in first person, and then you can like see their face and stuff. There were just so many unique ideas that could have been done with the Wii U that just sadly will never be done. 
Oh, here's here, here's a double hitter. Uh, we'll do this one at a time. Sonic, boom! The rise of Lyric. Uh, this could be done on the Switch, but it sadly will never leave the Wii U because it's a terrible game. Um, if you like Sonic, like a lot, you can find some enjoyment in this. I really love Sonic, so I found some enjoyment in this. Um, it's not terrible. The voice acting is kind of cringy. It's not the normal voice actors that you would expect. It's the people that did the cartoon. Um, so that is one thing that I didn't enjoy about it. Had it had normal voice actors and didn't play, or and still played terribly like it does, it would have made it a little bit more enjoyable for me. Um, but I'll, overall, pretty pretty fun game if you can find this for like ten bucks. Um, if if you really like Sonic, um, and I mean if you really like Sonic, there's some 3D parts. And then there's some side-scrolling parts, so it's kind of like Generations-esque Sonic game. Um, continuing in the theme of Sonic, Sonic Lost World, Deadly Six Edition. Um, so the Deadly Six Edition is a little bit harder to find, um, but not really. And you know I love me some shiny ho holographic covers. Um, so this was still while they were putting out manuals. And then here's the little card for that. Um, this actually is a decent Sonic game that, again, not a lot of people talk about and will forever be trapped on the Wii U. Um, could it be done on other platforms? Absolutely. Is it going to be? Absolutely not. Just with Sega's track record of not releasing games, you know, porting them up in future releases and this and that. Hell, they won't even give a Shenmue 1 and 2 for current gen. And that's just like everybody's begging for that. IGN's, GameStop's. All the websites, all the gamers, all the YouTubers were all begging for it. I want Shenmue 1 and 2 in HD. So, with that being said, I don't think Sega is going to bring Sonic Lost Worlds up to the Switch. Alright, so here is a Wii U edition of a game that added a lot of Nintendo features to the game. That being Tekken Tag Tournament 2 Wii U edition. Um, not only do I think the Tekken Tag Tournament games are pretty much dead at this point. I don't think any of the Tekken, between all the systems, I don't think they sold well. This actually added a lot of Nintendo features to it that made it like a Wii U specific game, whereas there's like mushrooms that come across the field and and then Nintendo costumes that you can wear and stuff. And uh, really fun game. Not gonna get ported up to the Switch. I highly doubt it. Uh, definitely a must pick up game for the Wii U. This is the definitive edition because it has a bunch of extra content you're not going to get on the 360 or the PS3. So I definitely recommend picking this up if you can. Not very expensive, however, it's kind of hard to find because this was an early on title. Not rare, not expensive, but hard to find. Alright. <laughs> By far, my favorite Wii U game ever, and one of maybe a handful of games that I've actually 100%ed on the first try because I just loved them so much. Pikmin 3. Never gonna leave the Wii U. It was designed solely with the gamepad in, in mind. Yes, you can play it with the Wii U modes, which is how I played it. In practice, we don't know how the Joy-Cons are going to work as far as motion controls, really. Like, we've had 1-2 Switch, which kinda works okay, sure, but we've never had, like, actual motion controlled games yet for the Switch to my knowledge. But Pikmin 3, it either needs to be used on the Wii U gamepad because of the map, which was an awesome feature of the Wii U that we now sadly lack, or the Wii U or the Wii Pro control or remote controls, sorry. Too many damn controllers that Nintendo makes. Um, but with that being said, the you know the nunchuck, just the aiming and everything about it was perfect. We're never gonna see Pikmin 3 again. This is going to remain on the Wii U. I told people all along after this game came out, this alone is such an amazing experience and one of the best visual experiences on the Wii U. This alone was reason enough to buy a Wii U. If nothing else swayed you, this alone was an amazing experience that could only be had on the Wii U. Alex, what is this final game? You saved up this juicy one for the end. I know you got something good cooked up for us. I do. Uh, this had a long, troubled life 
and finally found a home through Nintendo. However, they didn't want to announce that they were publishing it. They didn't want to announce that they were helping develop it. They didn't want to have anything to do with this game. Devil's Third. This is never going to come out anywhere else. I really don't think so. A, because Nintendo owns it. B, it didn't sell well. B, some would say because Nintendo published such limited numbers of it. Um, I would say it is a fun game to pick up and play if you can find it cheap. However, this is well known to be one of the top 10 rarest games for the Wii U, so you're probably not going to find it cheap. Um, but if you can find it for 30 bucks, I would say that's a good price to jump in on it at. Um, definitely worth playing, it really is. The multiplayer for this was... I believe it's already shut down, unfortunately. I did play it for maybe 10 hours or so, so I, I got some, some good enjoyment out of it. Um, this game had so much potential. Had the Wii U sold better, or had Nintendo actually, you know, marketed this and advertised it anywhere and everywhere and pushed it and put it into a Nintendo Direct, like, given it its own Nintendo Direct, and just, um, you know, showed some gameplay for it, and yeah, the visuals weren't very pretty, the textures were muddy, the controls were a little janky, but the story to it was pretty cool. This is made by Itagaki, Dead or Alive, Ninja Gaiden guy. Um, I love Ninja Gaiden and I love Dead or Alive, so I knew I would love this. It has his feel to the game, like you'll just instantly feel at home when you play this, if you like those two franchises. Um, it, it has, I mean, the, the intro to this game, he's just sitting there pounding on some drums, and, and it's such an epic experience, it really is. Um, it almost has kind of like a Metal Gear story to it as well, so if you're into Metal Gear, you, you, you'll find a home in this game. And being that this sold so poorly, and Nintendo clearly doesn't want that this type of mature thing on their console, you're never going to see this anywhere else. And... Uh, with that being said, guys, this is 10 Wii U games that you will never see anywhere else. All right, guys, peace out for now. Till next time. Come here, you mother. I'm on I guess now's a good time to point out that since Nintendo won't let me monetize these videos and YouTube won't let me monetize these videos, I guess I don't really care about putting gameplay into these videos. Oh well. Nintendo, you really need to step up your game on YouTube.